when can we go in? Let's meet a construction worker. Chapter 1. Trucks with Teeth. Hiya, kids. <laughs> Our class is taking a field trip. We're visiting a construction zone. Mr. Moore greets us. He is the boss here. So glad you could come. He's going to show us how construction workers build a new building. He says we have to stay outside the fence. Workers only in a construction zone. Construction workers are people in the community. A community is a group of people who live in the same city, town, or neighborhood. Some construction workers work on buildings. Some build roads. Iron workers, concrete workers, carpenters, roofers, and plumbers are all construction workers. This isn't just any construction site. It's our new school. But right now, it's mostly dirt. Awesome, Aiden says. We can play King of the Hill at recess. <laughs> Mr. Moore smiles. All this dirt will be flat. You'll have a playground on top. We see lots of trucks. Some work with big metal teeth. Some have strong arms. An excavator digs wide ditches for basements. It digs narrow ditches called trenches for water pipes. It also moves dirt for making roads. The trucks don't do all the work. People are inside. They steer. They guide heavy loads. <laughs> Here we go. Chapter 2. Safety First. Mr. Moore used to be a carpenter. He helped build things with wood. Later, he was the lead carpenter. Now, he is the leader of all the workers. Yeah, right here. He follows plans that an architect created. Together, the workers turn those plans into a building. It'll be perfect. Yeah. Construction workers take classes and get training to learn how to do their jobs. They may start work as apprentices. That means they learn on the job from other workers. Mr. Moore's number one job is keeping people safe. He makes sure workers wear hard hats to protect their heads. They wear orange safety vests so others can see them easily. That's it. Yeah. Beep, beep. A concrete mixer beeps as it backs up. Beep, beep, beep. The beeping helps keep everyone safe. Workers know to move out of the truck's path when they hear it. And stop. Wet concrete flows through a long pipe to the ground. This will be our school floor. 
drivers must get the concrete to the construction zone quickly. Concrete begins to dry after about 90 minutes. Then it becomes hard. It won't pour. Will we sink into it? Luke asks. Mr. Moore says the concrete will dry and harden. Then carpets and rugs will go on top of it. Chapter 3, Green School. Some workers work high above the ground. Masons build the walls with bricks. Someone runs wires for electricity through the walls. Crunch! Whoa. A few bricks break. They will be recycled. So will leftover metal, wood, cardboard, and concrete. Your school is a green school. Mr. Moore says. Amia asks, Apple green or forest green? <laughs> Not the color green, he says. Green means it's earth friendly. <laughs> Here we go. He unrolls our school drawing. Look, it's our school. Uh -huh. Wow. It Solar panels on the roof will take in energy from the sun. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> this energy will power our computers, lights, and more. Big windows can also make a building Earth-friendly. Windows and skylights let in sunlight. So people don't always need the lights on. That saves energy. We can't wait for our sunny green school to be finished. Oh boy, yes! Because Mr. Moore lends a hand to build our new school, we give him a hand. <laughs> Patients. Our class is on a mission. We want to find out what a doctor does. We decide to talk to Dr. Zambil. He's a pediatrician. That's a doctor who treats children. Doctors are workers in the community. A community is a group of people who live in the same city, town, or neighborhood. I help kids feel their best, he says. How do you do that? asks Jaden. Dr. Zambiel explains by telling us about his day. Dr. Zambiel works in a clinic. He sees about 20 patients each day. They are babies, children, and teenagers. Some are sick or hurt. I find out what's wrong, he says. They may need medicine. They may need to rest. 
Sometimes they need to go to the hospital. Doctors write prescriptions for medicine. A prescription tells a pharmacist what medicine a patient needs. Here you go. It also tells the patient when to take the medicine. Sick or injured children may see a specialist. A specialist is a doctor who treats one part of the body, such as the heart. Some specialists are also pediatricians. JJ raises his hand. I went to the hospital when I was little, but I'm better now. Good, Dr. Zambil says. That's our goal. We want you to be healthy so you can reach your goals too. My goal is to be a tightrope walker, Nick says. Uh-oh, Dr. Zambil says. Chapter 2 Checkups I went to the doctor when I wasn't sick, Katya says. That's good, Dr. Zambil says. Kids should see a doctor once a year for checkups. He checks their ears. He listens to their hearts. He asks if they eat healthy food. He asks if they run around. These things help kids stay well. Okay, hold still. Doctors examine ears with a tool called an otoscope. They listen to the heart with a stethoscope. Shots make you immune to some diseases, such as measles. That means your body protects itself from the germs that cause the disease. Do you give kids shots? Paul asks. Don't worry, dear. You'll be just fine. Nurses do, Dr. Zambiel says. They took classes. That didn't hurt a bit, did it? They know how to make the shots hurt less. Chapter 3 Doctor School Did you have to take classes too? Asks Paul. Yes, lots of them, Dr. Zambiel says. We learned that Dr. Zambiel went to grade school for nine years, high school for four years, and college for four years. Then he had medical school and training for seven years. That's 24 years of school and a lot of homework. Medical school lasts four years. Then students become residents and fellows. They see patients. Other doctors help them. This takes three to ten years. When I'm not at the clinic, I teach, Dr. Zambiel says. Like Ms. Wynn! We say, looking at our teacher. Yes, but I don't teach in a classroom, he says. I teach at the hospital. My students learn to be doctors by seeing real patients. Open wide. Wider. 
That's it. Medical students spend time at a hospital during every year of medical school. Experienced doctors teach them how to treat patients. Lainey raises her hand. I was a real patient. I went to the hospital when I broke my arm. You probably had an x-ray. Dr. Zambiel holds one up. That's what it looks like on the inside. Oh, I want one. X-rays are pictures that show the bones and organs inside your body. But most of the time, these aren't needed during a visit to the doctor. We all want to tell Dr. Zambiel about our injuries. But he has to go see patients. And we have to go to recess. Running around keeps us healthy. Because Dr. Zambi lends a hand to help us feel our best, we give him a hand. Thanks, kids. Hello, everybody. We're going to find out what a police officer does. Oh, wow. We invited Officer Gabby. Hi, Officer Gabby. She works at our school. So nice to meet you. I keep our neighborhood safe, says Officer Gabby. Oh, oh. And our school, says Madeline. Officer Gabby is a school resource officer. That's her assignment. Making students safe is her job. You are important to me, so I need to keep you safe. Please stop. She stops cars at the crosswalk. It's okay to cross now, kids. <laughs> Thank you. And she warns us about strangers. Never take rides from strangers. Every police officer has an assignment. Different assignments have different jobs. Traffic officers give tickets. Field training officers teach new officers. School resource officers help students. Did you get your assignment from police school? Asks Phoebe. <laughs> From my police department, says Officer Gabby. First, I was a patrol officer. It was part of my training. I worked hard. Then I got a new assignment. Roger. Officer Gabby on the way. We're happy she did. Officers start training in school. Their school is a police academy. They go to this school after they finish high school. They study the law there. They practice directing traffic and other skills. The academy helps them get ready for their assignments. Chapter 2, Officer Ken and a Canine. Most officers wear a police uniform. Special clothes and tools are part of this uniform. 
1051 at 1422 Pine Street. Officer Gabby's uniform is talking. Whoa, whoa. Go for Officer Gabby. Officer Gabby, please report in. Roger. What's that noise? Asks Beckett. My police radio, she says. Officer Ken is on patrol. The radio is how he shares information. Officer Ken reporting in. Officers talk over a police radio. They use numbers. Some numbers are paired with 10. The pairs are instructions. 1051 is tow truck needed. 104 is I hear you. Using numbers is a fast way of talking. <laughs> Officer Ken works in the neighborhood. He drives a police car. Police cars have technology tools. A radio sends messages. A camera records what officers see. There's even room for a computer. Officers look up cars' license plate numbers. They also type reports. Some patrol officers use helicopters or boats. Trevor One is en route. Others ride bicycles or motorcycles. Roger that. Heading over. Still others work on horseback. Giddy up, Officer Carrots. Let's go. Patrol officers get information on the go. They use technology to help them do their jobs. Halt! Who goes there? <coughs> Officer Ken has a canine partner. Canine partners are also called police dogs. Officer Ken's canine partner is named Badge. Keep an open eye, Badge. There's trouble afoot. <coughs> Sniffing out things is a canine partner's job. Badge finds people and hidden objects. And he wears a uniform, too. All right, Badge, start smelling. Canine partners use a special tool. That tool is their nose. A dog's sense of smell is a thousand times stronger than a human's. Police dogs can follow a trail for miles. They can pick up a scent underground. They can even smell things underwater. Chapter three, team safety. Oh, 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 what is your question? Do officers have people partners? Asks Ben. Many do, says Officer Gabby. We also work with officers in other towns, cities, states, and countries. Roger that. Standing by. Roger that. Sending in backup. By teaming up, we can keep you safer. <laughs> Code four. We got him. <laughs> Go team safety, says Ben. Police officers are part of a community. A community is a group of people who live in the same city, town, or neighborhood. Not all police officers work in a neighborhood. State police patrol highways. They keep roads safe across the state. FBI agents protect the country. They gather information to fight crime. And they help catch people who break the law. Your fingerprints were found at the scene of the crime. We know you did it. Tell us why. FBI headquarters are in Washington, D.C. But FBI agents work around the world. The agents collect fingerprints. They watch areas for crime. 
They also use science to solve cases. Even we help team safety. We buckle our seat belts. Hey, you guys are being mean. We stand up against bullying. Ow. Oh, we're sorry. When there's an emergency, we dial 911. Gabby makes our neighborhood safe. So we give our neighborhood helper a hand, too. Give her a round of applause. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. It was my pleasure to be here. Meet a veterinarian. <laughs> Chapter one. Even tigers say, ah. Today, our class is having a visitor. We want to know what a veterinarian does. We invited Dr. Kate, the veterinarian. Hello, kids. <laughs> she helps us take care of Henry. Henry is our class guinea pig. He is also Dr. Kate's patient. <laughs> Veterinarians are people in the community. A community is a group of people who live in the same city, town, or neighborhood. I help keep animals healthy, says Dr. Kate. Dr. Kate gives Henry a checkup. She checks his eyes and ears. They look great. Aw, great job, Henry. Oh, 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 can I be next? Asks Ethan. Dr. Kate says veterinarians don't see human patients. Veterinarians, also called vets, are doctors for animals. But their work can help people stay healthy, too. Some animal illnesses can make people sick. Vets find cures for those illnesses. Then they share the cures with people doctors. Let's take a look, shall we? Mm, perfect. Dr. Kate is a small animal vet. She treats pets such as dogs and rabbits. Hmm, good boy. <laughs> Aww. Small animal vets work in an office. Their patients visit them there. But vets for farm or zoo animals go to their patients. An elephant can't fit in a waiting room after all. There are also vets for large animals and wild animals. They help out at farms and zoos. Even tigers say, Ah! Ooh, tiger breath looks good. Mm, yes, I see. Yes, mm. this pig is very healthy because his tail is curved. Ah, yes. Vets go to a special school. They study how to care for animals. When you check a pig's ear, you must lift it up to see inside. They learn about protecting them in zoos, on farms, and in your home. Yes. Then they can help other animal helpers like wildlife rescuers and pet owners.
Before people become veterinarians, they make a promise. They say the veterinarian's oath. Part of the oath is promising they'll be kind to animals. A kind doctor can be the best medicine. Chapter 2. Harry Henry. <laughs> Yikes! What happened to Henry's fur? Oh, Henry, you're so fuzzy. He looks like Joy's fuzzy pencil. <laughs> They're both fluffy. Dr. Kate has just the thing for messy hair. A brush. Ta -da! She says it's one of the many tools vets use. Brush, brush, brush. <laughs> Good job, Henry. Phew! All better. Some pets love getting messy. But naughty fur or muddy paws can make them sick. So vets groom their patients. Groom means to clean. Vets trim beaks, wash hooves, and even brush teeth. Pet owners can learn how to groom their pets by watching a vet. <laughs> Sometimes an animal has problems with its fur, scales, or feathers. A dog can get bugs that make its body itchy. Here you are, sir. One pill a day and a good long bath. Don't worry, buddy. This will be quick. A lizard can get a broken nail. Vets have special tools for solving these problems. Well, hello there! Aww! A vet's tools are made for animals. So they look different from the ones your doctor uses. Your doctor has a scale that's right for your size. But how does a vet weigh a mouse? A vet has a scale that's the perfect size. Mm-hmm, looking good. Vets also use many of the same tools that people doctors use. Ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. Mm-hmm, everything sounds good. They use a stethoscope for listening to the heart. Does someone want a snack? They have an x-ray machine for seeing bones. Don't worry, Liam. It'll be quick. They also give shots that stop nasty germs. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. See? Over and done with. Goodbye. Liam sure doesn't like shots. He bets most animals don't either. Chapter 3, Good Henry Helpers. Whoa, look at him go! No worries for Henry today. His checkup was easy. Dr. Kate says he's healthy. Oh, good job, Henry. Yay, Henry! Yay, Henry. Good job, Henry! He's so happy. That means we're good Henry Helpers, says Ella. Thanks to Dr. Kate, we learn how to take even better care of him. He looks great! You kids did a great job today. It feels great when your pet is healthy. But what if a pet gets sick? Good pet helpers call their pets vet. Vets work hard at making their patients better. A healthy pet makes a vet feel great too. <laughs> Dr. Kate shows us the right foods for Henry. She talks about ways he can get exercise. But most important, 
she makes us promise to give him lots of love. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. It's a promise we always keep. Dr. Kate lends a hand with Henry, so we give our animal helper a hand, too. If you don't have books, what are you waiting for? It's a kid-safe, ad-free library full of so many storybooks that are brought to life. Ask your grown-up and start exploring more fun stories like these. You have to go and ask for books. Enjoy the specialties of this app right here. Go on, come on, go off. <laughs> Thanks for watching. For more stories, try the Books app for free today.